We, all, we need each other to survive. Could you please open your Bibles to Matthew's Gospel, the 19th chapter. Time is far spent. I want to make sure I release us on time because we have um, Swole the Mega Praise tonight. Thank you. I've missed you. Missed you, glory. Matthew's Gospel, the 19th chapter. I'd like all of you to please make sure you come for the evening service. And I want us to pray for Lagos, pray for the church, pray for safety. This week is very important to the destiny of this country. We are going to elections on Saturday. We pray that no blood will be lost. We pray that there will be no violence, that God will help us. Will be safe in Jesus' name. Um, I, I stand with those that do not have cash to come to church. And I was telling somebody last week that we should have done some transport arrangement to help people. A church should always be there for people. I think I even gave that ask to somebody to see how we can get transportation support for our members. There is a church that I know, Owen Our Aja Church, they actually sent buses out to pick people to service. This last two Sundays, we should be responsive leaders. We should respond to times. We should not be stoic. We should always be sensitive, not just to the things the Lord is doing in the spirit, but to the times we live in. I, I, I pray, I want to thank you all that could make it to church. You all still defied whatever challenges out there. You made it to church. Thank you. Appreciate yourself, would you? Clap for all of yourself. Clap for yourselves. Last week, our YouTube channel shut up. I, I, I went home deliberately to watch those that joined us online. It was unusually high, which meant many people stayed at home to watch. I, was, I, just, I just did that tracking myself. And um, so we will try. God will help us. Only we have to be responsive. It's not just talk. Talk is cheap. We have to be responsive. We have to see. We have to love people. We have to understand what our people are going through and say, how can we have stopgap measures to just ameliorate the suffering? There is a church that I was telling my treasurer that even supported their members with cash swap. We don't have that kind of facility. Cash swap. That was two weeks ago. They helped their members because they knew their members didn't have cash. But there was a limit to 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 just to help the weak and the those that are really in need to go by that week, just to survive that week. We have to do ministry and church differently. I, I, we have to change our methods. We have to be there. What would Jesus do? <laughs> he fed 5,000. He didn't plan to. He looked at the plight, saw the people, said, no, these guys can't go home like this. Let's do something for them. Let's find a way of helping them. We don't have money. I, I, okay, what do you have? <laughs> you get what you have. And you solve the problems. Father, we ask that you help us to solve problems. And not to be the problem. Matthew's Gospel, the 19th chapter. I'll read from verse number 3. I want to preach on the subject, Jesus Code. Jesus Code. And when this is a family month. So the topic today is Jesus Code. And it's a very unpopular code. And after I finish preaching on Jesus code, then I will answer some questions. As usual, as my custom is. And that culture is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 7, where Paul said it is written that you guys wrote to me to answer some questions. So churches should also take questions from the people and answer. Matthew's gospel, the 19th from verse 3. The Pharisees also came to him, tempting him, saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man? To put away his wife for every cause. I'm not going to do an exegesis on that scripture. Note the word for every cause. The question is, is it lawful? And this is marriage. And he answered and said to them, Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? And said, for this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave 
to his wife and the twin shall be one flesh the two shall become one wherefore there are no more there are no more twin but one flesh what therefore God has joined together uh, let no man put asunder they said to him Note verse 7. Why did Moses? Why did Moses? Moses. God, this is deep. Why did Moses? A preacher. A man of God. A bishop. A man of God. He heard God. A friend of God. Then command. was a commandment? To give a writing of divorcement. And to put her away. He said to them, Moses tweaked, tweaked the word of God. Moses tweaked it a little bit, tweaked it around. He adjusted it, he amended it. He moved things around a little bit because of the hardness of your hearts. You guys are stubborn, aren't you? And he allowed you to put away your wives. But from the beginning, somebody shout, it was not so. Shout, it was not so. And I say to you, verse 9, this is debatable. This is, depends on how you see the scriptures, what is read. People have different versions of these. Whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, commit adultery. And whoever marrieth her, which is put away, does also commit adultery. Verse 10. This is what I love so much. I love verse 10 a lot. That's what Kulish Oyibu said to me. This is what Pastor John said to me. And his disciples said to him, ah, if the case of a man be so with a woman, ah, it is not good to. Ah, ah, oh God, oh God, Jesus, they sweet me for Bella. If the case of a man ah, be so with his wife, Abba, it is not good to. Because they had planned to divorce their wives. Disciples. Peter was married. They were married. They were all married. They were all married. Those bunch were married. A bunch. And they looked at him and said, Oh God. <laughs> ah, if the case of a man with his wife, is, then it is better not to. Can you imagine disciples said that? The Pharisees quoted the Moses. Disciples went traditional. You mean I, I'm trapped? You mean I'm stuck? You mean I can't get out? And I can't push her out? Why am I marrying? Why are you marrying to divorce? Why are you marrying to put that away? Okay, I now understand. You are marrying a sex object, an object to use for your pleasure. When you are done, you put that next, 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 next. If I can't push this away, then it's better not to have one. Why would it be better not to marry? Can I tell you why, Macri? I can do many without being uh, attached to one. Let me be a good single than be a bad married. Verse number 10. I like verse 10 a lot. Because this is what the modern day church is saying. I like verse 10 too. I love it. I can run over. I like verse 10 a lot. Uh -uh. His disciples said to him, His disciples, oh, his own people, his own followers, if the case of a man be so with his wife, it is not good. But I thought God said it is not good for man to be alone. No, it is not good to marry. There are two, it is not good. Which of the two will you take? It is not good for man to be alone or it is not good for man to marry. I'm asking you, they're answering me here. Are you enjoying that? Then Jesus said to them, this is another verse that people have twisted to mean Jesus supported homosexuality. They've twisted verse, the next verse. And he said, All men cannot receive this saying, 
safe day to whom is given. For verse 12 says, there are some eunuchs which were so born from their mother's womb. So they've twisted that to mean that, oh, God said there are some people that are going to be homosexual by nature, born from their womb, that they cannot have sexual urges towards women, but did not say they should have sexual urges towards men. I thought you would clap. I thought you would clap. Enoch didn't have sexual urges at all. So if you're going to be an Enoch, be an Enoch. Father, we thank you. We ask you to speak to us today again in Jesus' name. You can have your seat. If you are going to be an Enoch, because they've twisted that to mean that, oh, sir, even Jesus spoke about sexual orientation when he said that not all men can receive this saying of a marriage. Not all men are made for marriage. Not all men. There are some men who are born Enoch from their mother's womb, and there are some men that made themselves Enoch for kingdom's sake, and there are some men that are made Enoch's. So there are three categories of men in that passage. All the three of them were eunuchs. Eunuchs were those that served in the palaces of the king those days. And they served in the palace of the king so that they wouldn't sleep with the wives. And the, the kings had harems and harems. All places where they kept concubines. They had many concubines. You know, you're a king, you're, an, you're, a, you're a mixed color, and then you find that your kids and your children are some kind of dark skin. Who slept with you? The slave. The Enoch that was meant to serve in the king's palace. So they started to castrate. They would castrate all the Enochs. Daniel was an Enoch. Daniel was an Enoch. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, they were Enochs. Once you walk in the palace, you're castrated, unable to perform. Unable to perform. They take your sexual ability from you so that you, you focus on the king and the king alone. So this one, Enochs, made by men for the kingdom. Some people offered themselves to celibacy, like Paul. I want to be a celibate. I don't want to marry because of the kingdom. Because of the kingdom. I want to be focused, not distracted. And I know that those that made themselves eunuchs. And don't some were born eunuchs. They just didn't have any sexual appeal to anything. Just, just like that. So if, if you marry such a man, you might never enjoy sex and marriage. And if you marry such a woman, you might be miserable the rest of your life. And because men also have different levels when it comes to sexual libido. You know, we have sexual, hypersexual, normal, and then those that are just not there. It's there. The Bible says it. So, so if you have, if you marry the person who's born an Enoch because the parents put pressure on him to marry, and they probably picked up a girl from the village. They said, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I said, okay, no problem. So I'll please you guys. I just get married. I'm just get married. The marriage may go through a lot of crises, from issues, and no people will not find out why. Why are they only having issues and stuff like that? But today I will be sharing on Jesus code, and this is very important for me. Then I'll answer a couple of questions here in my note. The Jesus code for marital solutions is very important, especially for this age. I say this with all fear. And um, I'm trembling because I know that many people will not accept the Jesus code. We will not because the times have said to us that the Jesus code is obsolete. Jesus code is a cake. Jesus code is ancient. Jesus code is not for the modern day. There are those that believe strongly that the Jesus code is wrong for today and would not obey the Jesus code for marriage. If you want to have solutions in your marriage, the Jesus code is not what you should adopt. Find another code. Find another code. And some people do push that and preach that. But we must stay strong and tell ourselves the truth. Depends on who you are. Last week, I spoke to you as a life coach. And I emphasized the life. Which life? Because all kind of lives. So the life that I now live. The life I now live. I told you about the new life and the old life. I can only coach you in this new life. And this new life has got a Jesus code. Now for those that want to live this new life, but want to use the whole code, it won't work. So you say you want to live this new life, but you want to use an old code to run that new life. I'm not a computer genius. I'm not, I'm not even a computer scientist. But I know that certain, certain things can work on Android 
but we work on iOS. Certain apps will work on iOS, we work on Android. So there are different things that won't work with each other. And certain operating uh, systems will not work right now because they're obsolete. You get it? So it's almost like saying, so if you want to use an operating system to operate your life, you better ask yourself, what kind of life do you want to live? And that's why I say, if you want to live a Christian life, and I thought the choir would sing, Lord, give us Christian home for such an occasion. If you sing it 10 times a week for the next four weeks, it's not, not that bad. Lord, because a Christian time is a Christian home we need now. And I know there are few Christian homes out there. Very few. And there's nothing wrong with you having a secular home. Nothing wrong. Nothing wrong with you having a traditional home. Like I often say, that the home you, you run is determined by the code you use. Do you get it? The home you run is determined by the code you use. When I got married to my wife almost three decades ago, I told my wife, I want to use the Jesus code for my marriage. Now, I come from a very traditional background. My, my parents, my mom in particular, my dad, they have this Agbole in the Jebo day. And if you know Jebo people, they just like parties. There's no weekend without a party back in those days. Every weekend there was a party. Every weekend a party. Every week. So you can I mean, just one hour drive from Lagos. They're supposed to be at home just functioning a party. I mean, clear, and my mom would go home every weekend for one party or the other. There's always a niece, an aunt, an uncle, a brother. There was always going to be a party. From opening the new house to doing naming ceremony to doing dog ceremony to doing whatever. There must be a party. There must, there must be a party to the point where the KBAC had to even give coffee. Ah, ah! Oh, boju. Why? That was it. So, so I made it clear. And I attended a few parties. So I, I told my wife, the Jesus code is what I want to use in my marriage because my marriage is a Christian home. So I told my mommy, I'm not marrying this beautiful babe for you. So I'm telling you ahead of time, she will not attend a boule parties. She will not, because it's, it's a traditional marriage that all of us, as we get married, our wives must come to those meetings so all the yawole will meet at a boule to do the party. Le. You get so the Yawoles would support the Ashwe B for the Yawole, for the Agbole, for the Patile. Do you get what I'm saying? So, so if you miss two, three weekends, you're considered an arrogant Yawole that's not submitted to Agbole and the code of Hile and stuff like that. Do you, you, you get my point? So I made that clear, clear. This marriage is not a traditional marriage. I did traditional engagement ceremony. I had to go through the ceremony to obey my parents and my culture. But my marriage is not going to obey traditional code. The wedding and the marriage are two different things. I went to church to do a church wedding. I did traditional wedding ceremony. I did court wedding, legal wedding ceremony. But as I said, my marriage will not be civil will not be government code because government code tells me after two years after this you can file for divorce no no in the jesus code is a christian home so i, I determine from get go the kind of home i want to raise and build so there is a christian home oh we use the bible there there is a traditional home we use culture here and there is what? Civil. We use what? Constitution. So when they came to Jesus, they said, Moses said, they were not speaking about the God code or Jesus code. They were speaking about this code. Because Moses was the president that gave them the law. So they were speaking about this code. That Moses gave us a law constitution of the court. And he said, if your wife, if a child of your wife give her a bill of divorcement. So Jesus said, no, 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 no. Can we go back to the beginning? Before Moses, marriage existed. Moses was not the originator of marriage. You, you got it. You got it. So you know, let's go back to the beginning. The beginning, let's use the code in the beginning. I love Jesus. Can we start from the beginning? 
What do you mean Moses? I know Moses said so. But can I take you back to where? Before Moses' father was born. Moses' mother. How to be. That was a marriage. <laughs> Let's go back. And Jesus' code is the beginning code. So it depends on the marriage you want to run. I want to run the Jesus marriage. And so my marriage will not be cut. Well, in this place, in this place, the cultural marriage, my wife is meant, when I come back from work, to bow down, kneel down, and serve me my meal. The Jabu way. And they will say, yeah, that is today, that is today. And she will go, oh, let me. Mm. Only five pieces of meat. Why not ten? <laughs> you will eat yourself and die. <laughs> well, <yeah. laughs> the Jesus code is different. Yes, sir. So I made it clear to them, we are partners. She's my helpmate. She's my life partner. She's not my slave. She's not my slave. She's my friend. My life partner. We're building together. We're raising godly home together. She said, I'm not going to run traditional cultural stuff as a traditional code says. Cultural code says, because then we're going to die. Because we're going to have a, a, an able man in Yoruba with different traditions. So you see codes, clash of codes. Clash of cultures. Because your culture is from our culture. In our culture, they slap the houses in the morning. Ba, ba. <laughs> in, in our culture, the wife misbehaves, you kick, you box, you be. It is normal. But in Jesus' cold, no, 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 no. No man should punch his own wife, or yet you are punching yourself. Do you see why I love Jesus' cold? How many of you get the Jesus' cold? I like this cold. I, 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 I like these people, I, I prefer that. That one, oh God. That one, oh yeah, 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 yeah. That one is determined by the, the sanity or insanity of the lawmakers. For those insane people can say man and man can marry, man and dog can marry, man can marry 50 wives. Because this is what the modern day Moses will say. Oh, you don't know. The modern day Moses in America have said their own views. Oh, you miss that. Modern day Moses in Europe, because Moses simply means law. It's legal. Law. And there are different laws when it comes to marriage. So that's why Jesus said to them, come, come, come. In the beginning. I'm not disputing that Moses said, but can we, depends on the marriage you want to run. Which operating system <laughs> do you want? Am I communicating? Which operating system do you want to use? I don't know computer. I'm just using the term. Whether it is window or doors, which operating system? <laughs> you knew my point. I don't know. I don't, I'm not trying to do a physics law. I know there's windows. I know there's doors too. <laughs> there's roof. <laughs> Praise God. So which are pretty stem? So it depends on who. And this is where we have issues today. And I'm very bothered. We have Christians that go to church and claim they're believers and honor and push this agenda in their marriages. And when it suits them, they tweak a little bit to the Moses side. When, the, when Moses does not suit them, they quickly come to the tradition and say, no, my mother didn't say me that. My mother-in-law said this. My father said it. No, when they don't like that, they go here. But they actually hate us there because we, the church people, we are too patient. We are too loving. We say to them, the Bible says, the Bible says, yeah, put the Bible aside. Put the Bible aside. Excuse me, are you a believer? I'm a believer, but in marriage, I'm a non believer. Oh, you missed that. I'm a believer. When it comes to marriage, I'm a non believer. I don't believe in Jesus' code. So I'm confused, Ryan. How do you reach them? How do you tell them what you say? Because the three codes have their good sides and what you guys call the pill, the bitter pills. It's not going to be easy for me. There's many things I want to do, but Jesus called says I can't do it. There's many things she wants to do. Jesus called tells her she can't do it. That one allows me to do some things, but Jesus called tells me you can't. Are you with me? So, some, so it's not all easy or rosy. There are good signs, and they, to show that you love Jesus, you obey what? Jesus called. Am I communicating? Are you sure? 
You don't have to like me, but just listen to me and understand it. So can we go to the beginning? And I'll give you seven things in the beginning. Seven things. You all know Genesis chapter 2 verse 18. It all started from the place. Give me Genesis 2 18. So since Jesus referred to the beginning, let's all go to the beginning. Exactly. And the Lord God said, it is not good for man to be alone. The disciples say, it is good for man to be alone. <laughs> Aha, you see? But don't say, aye. Because the disciple says, ah, in the case of a man be so with his wife, it is good for a man to be alone. But the Lord God said, it is not good. Let's work it out. Let's work it out. Let's find a solution. Being alone is not a solution Let's, because it's not good. The God that says it's not good knows you too, damn, too well. He knows you more than you know yourself. You are pretending. If you hear a man say it is good, they're lying. Eh? It's not good. The way Adobe be saying it, she means it. She said, she said, she said, it's not good. This man refused to marry us. It's not good. <laughs> not you, us. It's not good. I'm telling them, it's not good for man to be. It's not good for woman to be alone. But man, come and marry you. Is that clear? Who said it? Who said there was marriage? Who started it? Don't forget that ever in your life. Marriage was not Adam's idea, it was God's idea. Clam. Adam did not say it's not good that I'm alone. It was God's idea, not Adam. Adam was there, but God said it's not good that you're alone. It was not Adam's idea, it was God's idea. Is that clear? Next verse. So, uh, and out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. Whatever Adam called every living creature, that was his name thereof. The living creature, social life. Next. And Adam gave names to all cattle and all fowl of the air and all beasts of the field. And all them. But for Adam was not found a help meet for him. All those who are helping him, but the one suitable for this particular emotional business was not found. So those that marry dogs, that's not the purpose of dogs. It's called bestiality. I saw one video, I was just laughing. And they dressed up a dog, and the man wore a, a suit, and the priest was marrying man and dog in California. With that, a man and dog. The dog was a bride. He wore a beautiful, beautiful, lovely uh, gown for the dog. Uh, are you with me? Next verse. And so God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam and he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh thereof. Next verse. And the rib which God had made, taken from man, made a woman and brought her unto the man. He brought a woman to the man. Next verse. And Adam said, this is now. The one I saw before is driven from now. The bone of my bones and the flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Next verse. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother. People have claimed Adam said this. Jesus claimed God said it. In Matthew 19 he said therefore and that's why God said a man shall leave his father and mother. So people don't know who said it but Jim just gave us the impression that it was Adam. Matthew 19 gave us the impression it was God. I shall cleave to his wife and they two shall be one flesh. 25. Listen. listen. 25 is the last one. And they were both naked. The man and his wife I won't ashamed. Now let's pick out seven points from these verses. Number one, don't forget the seven lessons from the beginning. If I go to my questions, number one, it is not good for man to be alone. Write it down. From the beginning, God created it. Marriage is to solve aloneness, not loneliness. Another day, to solve what aloneness not loneliness. Some people are married and still lonely. Loneliness is a different business. Some people have been lonely about marriage, but you're not alone. We'll solve that later. Not, 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 not that. I don't have too much time for that. I will teach that later. Number two, Adam and Eve. Marriage is between man and woman, not same sex from the beginning. What I'm saying now can put me to trouble in America. But it's saying in my Bible. Jesus said, let's go back to Jesus' code from the beginning. Male and female, Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. Am I right? In the beginning, no. In the beginning. 
Am, am, I, am I correct? That's what, that's what the Bible says to us. Number three, there was a garden and a ground experience. I wish I could explain that. Garden and ground. He placed man in the garden. But when man fell, he pushed man into the ground. The ground is a secular home. The garden is a Christian home. The garden is a Christian home. The ground is a secular home. There was still marriage on the ground, but there was a marriage in the garden. The one in the garden was the one that God superintended over. The one on the ground. So we have many marriages on grounds, not in the gardens. I want to have a marriage in the garden. Is that clear? So my marriage is a Christian home and it's a garden marriage, not a ground marriage. Because he cursed them and he placed them on the ground. Number four, nothing wrong. Oh, Jesus, this is powerful. There's nothing wrong with the third party. It is who the third party is that matters. Now, this is where preachers have told you and I have told you in the past too, including me, I've wrongly preached that the reason your marriage is dying is you allow the third party into your marriage. Because the serpent was a third party that destroyed their marriage. Yes or no? But there was a third party. There was a God there. Before the serpent came. God was in their marriage. God was coming every night to have fellowship with them. Yes or no? Yes or no? So there's nothing wrong with the third party. It is who the third party is. If God is your third party, fantastic. If it's a serpent, you're in trouble. Do you get it? Because I've seen people twist that scripture. And they don't talk to your pastor. No. So they build walls. Christians are build walls. They are going through hell. They are told not to talk. They say, don't tell anybody because don't accommodate a third party in your marriage. Die in silence. The man is beating you black and blue. But you are taught at intending couples classes. Man is between man and woman. Don't tell anybody what you are going through. The third party should not come in. No, there can be third party or a threefold cord cannot be broken. Depends on who the third party Am I, Are you with me? If God is the third party there, would you have crisis? It is when the devil became third party besides saying it's bad. Uh, I don't know if you're hearing me. Could you not just make it blank? And it sounds okay. Me to have preached it before. That's why you see people, a Christian woman is pregnant, not anybody, not even the pastor. Why? They say, they say, if you tell them, the pregnancy will disappear. If God did it, it cannot. We're so afraid of doing everything. Even husband and wife are going through a lot. They will not try. We must not bring the top party in. We're isolating ourselves. And the man is beating you, the woman is harassing you, both of you are being oppressed, and you are just dying in silence. Top party. Everybody talk, even God is taught party. Don't let God know what you are going through. Don't, we don't even want to tell God what you are going through. Does that make sense? Just choose the third party wisely. Do you get the point now? Because if Julian is the third party, she won't destroy her marriage. Because I know her values. I know her values. Pastor Tonya, please, ma, I'm going to do this. She will counsel you right. She will help you through it. But you refuse to talk to the pastors. Because they've told you, don't talk to third party. Don't talk to third party. Satan, Satan. You stay there with your second party. <laughs> As if third party is PDP or APC. Stay there. Abi, is it PD, APC, AP, PDC? Stay there. God will help you. You better look for a good third party and drag it to my side. I'm going through it. Hell in so they can help you together. Am I communicating? Yeah, I don't trust anybody. Hey, okay, stay there. Yeah, I don't trust anybody. You tell them now. You don't want to hear the truth. Because you tell them, they tell the truth. You don't want to hear the truth. That's why we don't tell people things. Because if you tell them, they will say, my sister, I love you, but you are wrong. You are wrong. You don't pour hot water on your husband now. Abba. There was a woman, my friend, true life story. He was praying. Have you ever seen a man of God praying that his wife should die? 20, he went on 30, Paul, 40 days prayer. 27th day, the woman packed out of the house. And the prayer was, Oh, no, wow! Atalaya, yeah, 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 ye
means to kill. And the man was telling true life story because the man went through a pastor many years ago. I was a young pastor. He was telling me. He said, "Cry to God." your husband fasting not eating not drinking crying i want you to hear oluwa ba mi abi ko pa olu ya ipo ya ipo pack a bag 27 day left the house ah, because this god will kill me true life story he prayed until the woman left Following week, he bought a goat, celebrated his freedom. <laughs> oh, true life story! It was that bad, though? I asked him, is that bad? He said, ah, He said, one day he was there with his friends, they were pastors, they were talking after service at home. The woman came in and said, who cook for you? Church members, to cook for you. Before the friends, my brother, she took the stool out and poured on him before them. Two of them verified the story to me because I didn't believe a woman can do that. Yeah, oh, pastor. So, one, one case. Hmm? Anger. <laughs> so, I said, no one is at a liar. Pa! 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 <laughs> and the church has prayed that you cannot divorce until your wife dies. So she believed that. So the solution is okay, God, kill me or you kill her. I'm telling you, she was, he said he was tired of living since one of us have to die. If you want me on earth, ah, <laughs> if it's time for me to go home, bah, me. <laughs> ah, bring God party. Make sure it is God. And godly, not the serpent and the devil. That's the issue. You choose the wrong people. Number five. Marriage occurs only when man lives to cleave. I'm so angry with so many young boys that have not left. I want to cleave. Therefore shall a man live. You have no business cleaving until you leave. Come. So if you are going to hold me, you're my father. You want to come here. You want to marry. Come. You want to marry. You are still holding to your parents like rapper. And you say, I want to marry you. God says, no, it won't work. Because you are bringing them into your marriage. Leave home first. Leave father and mother. Mommy, I want to go on my own. Thank you. Mommy, thank you. Then cleave. There's no, they're not here. But that's where you bring them inside. Some of you don't even bring your in-laws inside. You bring your friends inside. You bring your boss inside. You bring your family, your life inside. You bring your uh, properties inside. The house becomes a house of 10 people. <laughs> Go and sit down. It says, therefore shall a man live and cleave. Did you see the leave a curse before the cleaving? What we do sometimes is, sir, we can't cleave who... Oh, what if these people show us pepper? Let us cleave, but not leave. After 10 years, if it works, then we will leave after we have cleaved. Check it. So you don't cleave and still. Eh, if you're going to hold on, then make sure you break off. It's important to break off. Therefore, so that's what marriage is in the beginning. Am I communicating? My time is up. Okay, I'm just going to read this. Finally, number five now. Six. Adam had four areas of concern in the garden. And we should also take care of those areas of our lives. Four areas. Number one, social life. Someone say social life. Adam had a good social life. He had animals. So there's nothing wrong with being social. Those of you that are born again and antisocial, you have a problem. You don't do family feast. And the only programs you attend the church is prayer meeting. <laughs> Can we have family feast? You will not go say that to Canaan. Can we have 
sessions just unwind. No, I don't want to wind session. It's carnality. Number two, emotional. There was social, the animals, there was emotional, the wife, there was financial, the work in the garden, and there was spiritual, God in the fellowship. So, if you have social, I don't have spiritual, it's not good. Because Adam's balanced life, balanced life for Adam in the garden. He had God in the garden, spiritual life. He had animals in the garden, social life. He had wife in the garden, matrimonial, emotional life. What emotions, what wife will solve, friends cannot solve. What friends can solve, wife cannot solve. Women, when your husband get married, don't stop him from having friends. You cannot watch football with him. If you do, you cannot cry when the team loses. You can't understand. Let him go and hang out with the boys. And when his team loses, like my team loses today, the boys will understand it well. But you will say, why are you now sad? You can't understand it. It's our language. Which you can't. So let him serve his friends to cry with him when they lose a football match. Then he can come home because you can't do that crying with him. Whether you, try to, to, you can't understand it. He had animal, he had social life. He also had marital, emotional life. Is that clear? But well, you can choose his friends for him. If you say a bad friend, say, don't go. My wife chose my friends for me. My wife said, this one will destroy your life, honey. Don't be his friend. Wrong values. And I listen to my wife. Listen to your wives. When it comes to those, they have eyes to see things you don't see. You. Those women, those women, they are precious. I don't know. They see things I don't see. Those women, they just have that thing. They even see more than what should be seen. They see more. If what, what is not be seen, they are seen. What is not be seen, they are seen. What is they are seen right, but they are also seeing what is not be seen. <laughs> so for the right ones, try I celebrate them. For the ones that should not be seen, they, uh, uh, I will not say anything. Praise God. Finally, they were both naked and unashamed. Seven things in the beginning. Don't you ever be ashamed of your husband's inadequacies and weaknesses. Don't you ever be ashamed of your wife's flaws. Protect her. Don't expose her. I'm not perfect. My wife protects me. She is not a protector. All of us have areas of our nakedness. Where we are naked, protect, cover. Don't be ashamed, but cover. Is that clear? Don't now go and expose your wife. Ah! She cannot cook! Is that your business? Keep it to your... Put your hands together for Jesus. Is that clear? Is that clear? I'll ask only two questions or three. I'll read all the questions to you. I'll read all so you can know people's minds. I'll answer two or three. Number one, dear reverend, what road is there for members of the church? I told them anonymity is guaranteed. Anonymity is guaranteed. What role does the church play in the area of traditional marriage? What role? I just told about three. What role does the church play in traditional marriage? Do you get it now? And court weddings. I have been married through court registry for more than 10 years. My husband is here to pay my bride price. Even after much persuasions and talks. I just want to be clear. Are there any spiritual implications if this is not done? Or can it become a generational thing or curse? Reason I asked is my mom also had a bride, a bride price paid very, very late in marriage. I don't want my daughter to have any issues in the future due to wrong decisions made by us. Thank you, sir. We want the role the church plays very flat. We don't play any active role. We play advisory and counseling role. Because traditional have their own culture, church as a culture, legal as a culture. But the church, our church, believes in traditional weddings. As the Bible stipulates, therefore shall a man leave his father and mother. God brought in parents at the beginning. God brought parents into the picture. So we believe strongly in traditional weddings. Please, man, go and pay your bride price. Go and pay. I know it could be high, it could be expensive. The church can be called to help you negotiate down, if it's possible. We'll find people from your town to go and negotiate it. But bride price is um, encouraged. You should pay the bride price. You should traditionally marry your spouse. We know you've done court, but you want to finish traditional wedding. It's important. God counts that as well. We know you have done church blessing, but go and do the needful. Praise God. Question number two, very difficult for me to answer. 
I'm just going to read it and I'm going to just gloss through it. What do you do if you found your husband is watching pornography? Carry the pornography and throw it away. <laughs> eh? Eh? Oh, pray for what, 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 what can you do? Beat him? Divorce him? Sit him down and discuss with him. Praise God! Shh! You're not even married. <laughs> no battle. They're not married. They are crying when they bereaved. Eh? And their own voice is at when those are married. I don't understand. Even if you're engaged, they're not married, but their voice, we're hearing their voice, all of us. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, you're learning. God bless you. They say they're learning, sir. They're learning, sir. If you catch your husband watching pornography, it's a very sexualized world today. I told you we went to a conference in Dallas, pastor's conference, apostolic conference in Dallas. And we were there and I was shocked. I, this is, they told us that whenever the pastors come, about 500 to 800 pastors, whenever we go into that conference, that their pornography sites are the highest in the whole year. I was shocked. So, Pastor Wally and I had gone while discussing, can you imagine the crisis in the body of Christ? I mean, the, 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 the hotel managers told us, wow, you guys have come this year again. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Now the time the pastors come, because they monitor the sites, the and that's when the it's highest in a year. So throughout the conference, I will confess my sin. I will just look at all them. <laughs> God forgive me, Lord forgive me, oh. Lord forgive me, oh. One day, if you see me, I was looking at them. Ah, look at these guys. I'll be in trial. <laughs> It's a very serious and present evil today. I did a youth conference. I told him to please tell me anonymously. 98% of the young people say, yes, we are on pornography, addicted. It's a serious matter. Because you cannot commit fornication, but you can commit pornography. It's better than fornication. It's very bad. It's real. Don't let's pretend it's not real. Very real. So to laugh through it and gloss over it, be to deceive ourselves. The industry is a multi-billion dollar industry. Who are those following it? Human beings. That's I don't understand. I was saying the negotiations, we have churches on every street. Nigerian breweries, Guinness, they are still selling. The market is going high every year. Who are those drinking it? Ghosts. <laughs> so, 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 don't think too far. It's just going to church drinking the thing now. Do you get the point? As churches are opening up every week, Nigerian people should be crying. It's that sales should be reducing. Sales is increasing. We are both increasing. More churches, more sales. More churches, more sales. <laughs> oh God, God help us. More churches, more sales. More churches, more sales. More churches, more sales. So, so it pays them to even fund opening more churches. Mercy, Lord. Mercy, Lord. It is fact. Go and check the facts. I know, I know, I know you know where it's fact. I'm going to say there's a problem. There's a problem. So, this is something that we have to be honest with ourselves. Talk to your husband. Sit your husband down. Say, my dear, I know I'm not satisfying you enough. Or if I am trying my best, I am aware that I've caught you once, two, three times doing pornography. Stop it. It's addictive. Talk to your husband one on one. A good man will say, ah, you caught me. Yes, I'm sorry. I won't do it anymore. I'm telling you. A good man will tell you I won't do it anymore. It may be lying to you. <laughs> oh, you, you, you people don't like me saying the truth. The man will still do it though. But a good man, honestly, will tell you, I'm sorry, my dear. Pray for me. I will not do it again. Tomorrow he may do it too. But this, the fact that he's telling you, I'm sorry, shows that he, you are starting a good, good place. And then you pray. And you'll be watching him. You make it difficult for him to do it. And be watching inside, be sitting around him every time. <laughs> but you cannot control a man that can do this. So it's a very strong. I, I don't have a formula from the Bible for this one. So don't give me all the questions I can't answer. Nah, just true. 
Number three, my husband left me and our child for six years. This is very bad. Six years. And now he followed his mother. One side of the story. With no support from him and his family. Disrespected my mother while alive and at, at death. Him and his family did not even attend my mother's burial at all. My husband tried to have sex with my niece. I didn't know till not, but now, he just said till now, but he just said he's sorry and that his mother caused everything. He believed her totally before now. Now, my, my question is, yes, I think he has come back. My question is, can I go back to such a man? That's a question. So we have Jesus code, traditional code, civil code. So, brethren, which code are we using now today? Jesus code. What would Jesus code say you should do? Forgive and go back. It's a tough code, but that is Jesus code. I know many women will be angry. <laughs> I'm only being sincere. Forgive. If he's begging, he's apologetic, he's saying sorry. But bring a third party, a trusted pastor in. Why? To support the verbal undertaking, be part of the reconciliatory process so that he can keep his word. Does that make sense? And he can cut off from bad influences. What the man did, I just told you, he did not leave when he, they went to cleave. And after cleaving, he was still only holding Saying that maybe after a while, oh, I will then leave. So maybe now he wants to now leave. Don't now stop him from cleaving. He's leaving late to cleave. But please forgive him. Let there be forgiveness in our hearts. If he means it, if he's sincere, if he's serious, I beg you in God's name, forgive him. Jesus called. Number four. Sir, I'm a man... Number five. Number five. You want four? Number five. You want number four? I'm in trouble. You want number four? I will read it. I will not answer it. Sir, I'm a man with strong sexual hodge. You want to hear? I'm reading. You want to hear? I'm reading. This is church now. But my wife is totally the opposite. You want to read? I'm, I'm, you want to hear? I'm reading. Shall I still continue? Number five. Number five. Aha! <laughs> Everybody, clap for yourself. <laughs> I love that lady. The Christian said, number five. Reverend, number five. Number five, sir. <laughs> now they want me to go to number five. But this number four is uh, somehow. Uh, somehow. I always initiate sex. She does not. It has become boring. I want to spice it up a bit. One of my colleagues, they enter my eye. This is what is here. Number five. See, I, I told you I didn't want to read. Is I should read? I will finish. <laughs> One of my colleagues they enter my eye. Somebody said, "Jesus." I said, "We cast now devils." Yeah. <laughs> because she is very sexy. I like I like the man's question. He said, "Help me, oh." He put, oh. So how can I help him? Flee all appearances of her. If you don't run, you will be caught. All I will say to you is run. But you have already given me an idea of what you want to do. Your question started with, I have very strong sexual urge. Can you see where the question is going? My wife is very, very boring. We are not enjoying it. Now, this is the real thing. One of my colleagues is very sexy. It's entering my... 
what shall I do? <laughs> Can you see the arrangement of the question? The question being arranged is already getting to the answer. But the answer you want, I cannot give. You know that Jesus' code cannot give. So you know what to do. Don't do it. Close your eyes. Number five. Should a man not seek his wife's opinion in all matters? No, should they, and should the wife not be the man's next of kin? I did yes. Should a man, this is a woman asking this question, obviously. Should a man not seek his wife's opinion in all matters? I pray that wife is his friend. Many of us occupy the role of a wife. The wife is an office. Husband is an office. Husband, wife, they are offices. The persons involved, if they are friends, the offices will be enjoyed. If the two individuals occupying those offices are not friends, the man will not share with his wife everything happening, even though the wife is in the office. Do you get the point? Even though the woman is in that office, like a pastor and a member, it's an office I'm occupying. But the person must be very close to his members. Or else the members will not confide in the pastor. They will just see the office as in an office in the occupy. I go in church, I come out, I go home. So also, husband is an office. Wife is an office. The individuals occupying those offices need to be what? Friends. If they are friends, that problem will be solved. The man will make ah, his friend his next of kin. If it's just a woman occupying that office in my life, we're not very close. There's no strong relationship. We don't have, we have children together. She's my wife, not my friend. So to answer it, I would say develop friendship. Then the, answer, the problem will be solved. Put your hands together. Okay. How necessary is it for a whole Christian home to have a family altar, considering the hustle and bustle in Lagos, this is a very good question. How do Christians combine morning devotion, quiet time, knowing the realities of where they will live? It's very difficult to do morning devotion when you're not devoted in the morning. Very difficult. In Lagos. So, so what I suggest to people is to do evening devotion. The altar is more important than the time. The altar is more important than the time. When we were younger, it was morning because there was no traffic, there was no this. You can get that at 7 I think get to office by 8. Now, if you leave by 5 o'clock, you can't even get there until 7. So, better when you come back at night, if it's 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, whether you eat, just one hour together, 30 minutes together, just share the scriptures, relax, read the scripture, do a prayer, and pray. She goes to bed, you go back and do your work. I have advocated evening devotions in the morning for a while. For a long time now, I've been saying it. Because most couples struggle in the morning. They are easier in the evening. They are cranky in the morning. Okay, so you start going to do morning devotion, praying in tongues, doing bathroom. So, let's pray for that dinner. That God will help us. <laughs> what, kind of devo- what kind of devotion is that one? Okay, is that, is that one is, are you devoted? I beg, don't, don't, don't insult devotion. Praise God. Do when? Do what? God bless you. Devotion is more important than the time, the altar. Okay, number seven. Let me just do this. Should a man discuss his total income with his wife? Must she say how he spends the money? Shall we rise? <laughs> I'm always afraid of money matters. Shall we rise? I'm not answering that one. I'm always afraid. Shall we rise? I'm sure so. <laughs> When it comes to money matters, money, shall we rise? We have risen. Shall we rise? So I said, we have risen. We have risen. <laughs> money matters are serious matters. Money matters. Most women want full disclosure. Yes or no? Yes or no? Especially when the man is making more money. But women fight full disclosure when they are making more money. They fight full disclosure when they make more money. You get the point? I mean, that's what I found out in my private counseling sessions. And no man has a moral right to say, my wife must fully disclose what you are making. I know you are making one at me. They will say, are you a gold digger? 
Okay, so, so I support full disclosure when it comes to monetary matters. I also support wise investment. Because if you know your wife that she spends more than you spend, then do not tell her everything. Your heart matters. I told my wife, don't tell me how much money we're making because she was making much money than me. I spend more than she does. She's an accountant. So I told her, keep the money from me if I know church will eat it. I told her because I know my weakness. So one day we're broke. I said, ah, I want to do this. I'm broke. She said, oh, we have money. I said, we have money. Why how? So you told me to save one. So I said, hey, you said it. Oh, I love you, honey. I love you. <laughs> she said, I'm so sure the money she's saving, she's not spending but for us both and my children. So why am I going to fight her for hiding the money from me that I know she will still spend for me? But a friend, God bless you. And because I know my weakness. I know my weakness and we spend it. So it was better for me to be honest with her, sweetheart, if I know I will spend, keep it from me. Same also with your husband. But the point is, you're not sure your husband will spend that money for you. You think he might have a side chick. So you want to know everything so you can all both plan it together. So I understand where you are coming from. Let's talk about friendship. Let's talk about trust. It's better for marriages to be healthy when we have that. Put your hands together for Jesus. Shall we rise to pray? Father, we thank you for today. We are grateful for the way you have taught us about the Jesus code. We pray that you help us to bring this code into our homes, into our lives. We submit to this code. Everyone repeat that and say, Lord, I submit to your code for my life in Jesus' name. Let your code superintend and rule over my actions and decisions in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray.